Hello everyone and welcome to this long-awaited video on Lilo's opening repertoire. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and in the coming 10 or 11 videos we are going to be having a look at all the different facets of Lilo's opening play. We start off with a summary video where we look at Lilo's choices in all the main moves d4, e4, knight f3 and 1c4. The first question is what is Lila's favourite first move? Well, I've been watching the recent uh, chess bonus of uh, season 23 where uh, Leela, Komodo and Stockfish take on all the other engines from the starting position and leela has been pretty consistent with 1e4 there. But when I let Leela run for uh, a really, really large number of nodes, uh, 346 million nodes, that's a couple of days uh, work on, uh, on my hardware, then Leela actually chooses the move 1d4. Um, which avoids the Berlin, which uh, is not a bad thing. And uh, its main line is uh, a good old fashioned Catalan actually. So uh, knight f6, c4, e6, g3, bishop e7, slightly unusual move order, but after d5 we're back into normal things. And then uh, Lila plays uh, the old main line, d takes c4, queen c2, a6. A4 to stop uh, black from playing b5, bishop d7, queen takes c4, bishop c6. And this is uh, very well known from human chess. Michael Adams uh, has played this uh, a number of times as black. Have I even played it as black? Possibly. Um, it uh, should be, uh, you know, quite decent, quite equal, but uh, just a small uh, edge for white. Um, Leela's main line is bishop g5, knight d7, knight c3, h6, takes, takes, and now a5. Um, and after queen d6, e3, rook d8, h4. Yeah, I mean, black has the two bishops, white's got a little bit more space, chances to expand on um, on both wings, maybe a chance to uh, use outposts on e5 and c5. In principle, nothing too uh, horrific for black, but probably just a small edge for white. Uh, now, the really interesting thing about it, and actually the reason why I let uh, Leela um, stamp away at this for uh, for so long was that um, I was simply a little bit shocked because um, after 1d4 um, for a very very long time Leela didn't want to play 1 knight f6 but wanted to play d5 and after c4 it wanted to play d take c4 which is the queen's gambit accepted and um, well I think it's a very good opening it was my favorite opening when I was a professional but uh, I was very surprised to see an engine choosing that as its main line uh, but in actual fact, I got uh, Mr. Beads, Leela's biggest fan, to fire up his uh, Leela altar, bringing uh, uh, Finland's entire power net down for a, a number of hours. And um, uh, he confirmed, actually, that um, uh, the Queen's Gambit Accepted was very high on its list of, uh, of favourite moves. And what's very interesting as well is that just like Stockfish, uh, Leela doesn't think that 3e4 um, is the best move for white. That's always considered to be the sharpest and most difficult uh, problem for black. It also wanted to play knight f3. Um, going into the old main lines and uh, actually it chose um, something very similar to uh, Stockfish. Now Stockfish wanted the unusual bishop e2 but um, uh, Leela wanted the uh, slightly more traditional b3 but the ideas are basically the same. Um, this bishop is going to retreat to um, e2 in the end um, we're going to play the bishop to b2, the knight to d2, um, and then afterwards, once the bishop's moved, this knight's coming into c4, the other knight coming to e5, and this bishop going to f3. It's a pretty standard way of developing against the, um, the queen's gambit accepted. And it's one that I've played with white uh, a number of times as well. Um, its main line uh, was pretty interesting. Knight bd7, bishop b2, bishop e7, bishop e2. We get this retreating move. And then b6, and uh, this has been played in quite a few um, um, elite games. Uh, actually, I think I was more or less the first one as black to uh, to take this idea of not playing b5, but playing it sort of hedge-like, like uh, hedgehog-like with uh, with b6. Um, the point being that if you play um, b5, then the uh, the pawn gets attacked by a4, and you have to make some difficult decisions about whether to take on a4 or whether to play b5 to b4. If you play b6, you just uh, don't expose your queen side, and uh, well, later on, if white goes knight d2 to c4, you keep b6 to b5 in reserve. Um, and as I said, been quite a few um, high-level games here. b6, knight d5, takes, takes, knight d5, knight d2, castles. And now instead of knight c4, which was played by uh, uh, Nihal, uh, uh, an Indian junior, um, then Leela wants uh, a3, bishop b7, queen c2, 
B5 knight e4 with a, a slight advantage for white. It's not bad for black, but uh, well, plenty of possibilities for um, uh, for white to uh, to get some play. Rooks come to c1 and d1. We maybe get uh, knight d6 in at some stage, and who knows? Maybe we'll we'll get to move a, an h pawn up the board. Definitely an interesting line for uh, for white. Uh, and in actual fact, uh, we saw uh, a game Leela against Ginkgo in the uh, Engine World Championship. Um, and that after um, uh, bishop e7, actually in that game, Leela played uh, d takes c5, bishop c5, knight d2, but similar types of positions. Um, Leela got a tiny edge, but uh, we were still in Ginkgo's book here. I think it went on till about move uh, 17 or 18. So um, it just ended up being a tiny edge that uh, Ginkgo managed to neutralize. But uh, definitely an interesting game, definitely worth looking at in the, uh, in the PGM. Uh, because Lila managed to make quite a bit of uh, of that position, even though it was a draw in the end. But that's quite interesting. I mean, d4, knight f6, which is what you'd expect, really, Lila's main move. But also the queen's gambit accepted very high up in its list of uh, of preferred moves. Um, now, yeah, e4, um, yeah, at lower depths, um, this is uh, uh, Lila's favourite move. Higher depths, what I'm seeing with... Uh, in any case, with, with my net uh, and uh, my version of Leela that I'm running, um, uh, e4 is, uh, is not its favourite move. Um, but unfortunately, as we've been seeing in this chess event bonus, Leela thinks that the Berlin is the very, very best here. And, uh, um, well, this uh, line that we've seen many times now in our bonus is Leela's favourite um, idea. Rookie one, rookie eight, c3, takes, takes. Queen e7 and uh, Leela's drawn countless games here in uh, in this uh, bonus event uh, recently. Um, I mean, I do wonder in some ways, you know, I mean, um, just uh, I don't know whether you remember, but, you know, in, in the infancy of computer chess, um, uh, the engines all thought that uh, the best reply to the French, e4, e6, d4, d5, was to take on d5. And somehow they, they felt that these uh, symmetrical positions were good for white and they always overestimated them enormously. And I just wonder whether, you know, whether they're, they're somehow the same is happening here because, uh, um, well, you know, we're just seeing lots and lots of draws when uh, this is played uh, at the engine level. Um, and white doesn't really seem to be able to achieve very much. And uh, it's hard to believe that uh, this type of position offers more chances for white than uh, than something like d3. But OK, you know, they just keep on going for it. But um, yeah, I mean, essentially, that's just leading to uh, something that certainly uh, amongst uh, between reasonably strong engines is just always going to end in a draw. What else does uh, Leela think? Well, um, I mean, there's knight f3, but uh, Leela's uh, um, thought there is just 1d5, and then it's expecting 2d4, just transposing back into Leela's main Catalan line. So uh, nothing too uh, exceptional there. And then the final uh, idea that we've got in this summary is 1c4. And here, actually, Leela, Leela's quite funny because uh, of all of the engines, uh, maybe not too surprisingly, but Leela is really the one that's the closest to Alpha Zero. And you, you see that uh, a number of echoes of Alpha Zero's choices, some of them slightly unusual, you see them back in, uh, in Leela's choices. Because here, uh, after E5, G3, um, Leela's move order that it wants is one that I've only ever seen Alpha Zero play, which is to go d5 straight away, and after c takes d5, knight f6, rather than the normal uh, and sensible knight f6, bishop g2, d5. Now, why does this make a difference? Well, in actual fact, uh, it's actually a pawn sacrifice because white can play, and Stockfish 8 played this a number of times, can actually play queen a4 check. And after bishop d7, queen b3, c6 from uh, Leela stroke uh, alpha zero. And uh, the idea, well, more or less, is just like some sort of uh, reversed more gambit. And a uh, number of great games uh, between Stockfish 8 and, uh, and alpha zero. I'll just show you uh, um, a couple of them. For example, knight f3, e4, knight e5, c takes d5, queen b7, seemingly winning the rook on a8, bishop d6, queen a8, bishop takes e5, queen b7, h5. And in we go. Um, so white's the um, uh, exchange and the pawn up. 
that Black's got quite a bit of activity there. You know, quite uh, big chances against the King's side. White doesn't really want to just castle there because, uh, well, there's going to be quite a lot of power uh, bearing down on the King's side. So um, D4 takes, castles was uh, Stockfish's uh, idea here. And now this is the shocking thing, you know. Uh, well, it's not shocking anymore, but uh, certainly when I first saw games like this in, in 2018, I was completely shocked. Because instead of just trying to blast through the H-file, uh, Alpha Zero just castles, plays h3 just to entomb this bishop on h1, and then just plays positionally. And uh, essentially what Alpha Zero is claiming is, uh, okay, I'm the exchange down, but um, my central control, my activity, uh, the extra 10p I think I'm still going to gain, and the fact that this pawn is on h3, blocking in this bishop on h1, which is also blocked in by the pawns on d5 and e4, that's sufficient compensation. And uh, to be honest, that's quite amazing. Um, but the way that the, the game went, um, Alpha Zero didn't even bother about those double pawns. Just f5 really just uh, entombing this bishop on h1. B3, D4, and the game was unbelievably sharp. Ended in a draw uh, in the end, but uh, well, pretty clear that uh, that Alpha Zero was uh, was making a lot of the running there. So that's really, really interesting and really uh, amazing to see uh, uh, Leela, you know, choosing exactly the same idea. Um, well, Bishop G2 is normal, and then Leela likes to play Knight takes D5, Knight F3, Knight C6, castles, and then Knight B6. And uh, actually uh, quite a, an aggressive plan uh, uh, intended by, uh, by Leela. Uh, b3 is its main move, bishop b6, bishop b2, f6, knight c3, queen d7. And who knows, we might be aiming for a, a castling queen side, bishop h3 and uh, h5. Not bad at all from, uh, from Leela. And actually the same uh, plan, the same method of development has been used by uh, Hikaru Nakamura as well in, uh, in a recent game. So there we are, that's uh, Leela stuff. Uh, slightly zany choice against uh, one c4, um, one d4 as its main move, Catalan, and, uh, and then afterwards against one e4, unfortunately still the Berlin. All right, that's the summary. Now we're gonna get into the specifics.